America's Next Top Model is a reality television show in which aspiring models compete for the title of America's Next Top Model and a chance to start their career in the modeling industry. The show was created, executive produced, and hosted by 90s supermodel Tyra Banks, and each week women were sent home for failing challenges or being the weakest link. The contestants were critiqued by the judges Nigel Barker, Tyra Banks herself, and former supermodel Janice Dickinson. The prizes were a modeling contract with a major agency, a $100,000 contract with a beauty brand, and a spread in a magazine. Some winners had successful careers, and the others didn't really do much. Some losing contestants used the exposure received from the show to jumpstart their careers. Here's what happened to some of the contestants after America's Next Top Model. But before I get into the topics, I want to give a special thanks to the sponsor of this video, Adam and Eve. AdamandEve.com has been the largest and number one adult superstore for over 45 years now. They carry a large variety of items for everyone like toys, lingerie, and board games to keep you occupied during the quarantine. You can enjoy the products for yourself or with a partner. 20% of the profit goes to fight the spread of HIV around the world, and they also offer 90-day returns and 24-7 customer service. So head over to adamandeve.com and use our code BLACKFEM for 50% off one item plus free shipping for U.S. and Canadian customers. Some exclusions may apply. Make sure you check the description box for the code and link to adamandeve.com. Now let's get into the video. Ebony Haith was a 24-year-old makeup artist from Harlem who competed in the first cycle of America's Next Top Model in 2003. She was the most outspoken person that season and is best known for her dramatic reactions and facial expressions on the show, which turned into popular memes and reaction gifts on social media. And all of those other things that, uh, that are of demonic presence. And Lord, you don't even have to believe in order to know that it's just about being a good person, Lord. And I know that that's... She finished seventh overall and didn't hug or say goodbye to any of the other contestants when she was eliminated. After Top Model, Ebony signed with numerous modeling agencies and appeared in Esquire and Height magazine. Ebony has done seminars for black women and her next goal is to do more acting and have her own TV show. Camille McDonald became a contestant on Cycle 2 in 2004 at 25 years old. She is from New York and began competing in pageants in her early teens. She was crowned Miss Teen Florida in 1996 and was runner-up for Miss Jamaica U.S. in 1997. She was the main villain of Cycle 2 and her attitude was criticized by the judges. Essence, here we come. Camille, she nailed Diana Ross. But I hated her attitude tonight. She didn't know what she was talking about. An empty barrel makes the most noise. <laughs> Camille is like, you know, I'm the baddest <laughs> bitch up in here. Camille, she better be careful. Camille. This picture is absolutely gorgeous. I see Camille and I see Diana Ross. But another thing you have that Diana is known for? The diva attitude. And the most beautiful thing about the top models that America loves is being humble and being modest. Congratulations. She won the challenge in episode eight, but was still eliminated. She finished fifth overall, and after top model, Camille signed contracts with major model management in Milan and New York. She appeared in Glamour Magazine, Women's Wear Daily, and W Magazine. Camille returned to America's Next Top Model in Cycle 17 to compete in the All-Stars competition. In 2016, she gave birth to a daughter. She still continues to model and recently starred in a Cadillac commercial. Mercedes Scalba was a 22-year-old born in New Jersey but living in Valencia, California. She was a student at California State University Northridge when she joined Cycle 2 in 2004. During the show, she revealed her lupus diagnosis. Mercedes lost to Joanna in the finale, and after Top Model, she signed a few modeling contracts. She graced the pages of Teen Vogue and Wedding Dresses magazine. She appeared in commercials for Sears, AT&T, Pay Less Shoes, Chili's, 
and Chevy. And she also did campaigns for Old Navy, Target, Macy's, and Kohl's. Mercedes also became a spokesperson for the Lupus Foundation of America and welcomed her first child in 2017. Takara Jones was a 22-year-old contestant who competed on Cycle 3 of Top Model in 2004. She was an aspiring plus-size model and had issues with clothes not fitting her during competitions. I'm here! I'm here! I'm Takara. I'm big, black, beautiful, and loving it. I thought that was Jay Alexander walking through the door. Damn. All right, Miss Takara. I, I love my skin and I'm working it. I'm hitting 200 in the butt. What? I want to encourage full-figure women to appreciate their body and to know that they're beautiful and that skinny women are evil. I'm sorry. I kind of had to be tough all my life. My whole immediate family been involved in just a crazy life, and so I, I had to be tough, and I had to be the mama. I'm the mama. <laughs> she won Cover Girl of the Week four times, but she placed seventh overall. After leaving the show, Takara had a very successful career as a model. She appeared in several music videos and graced the covers of King Magazine, Black Hero Magazine, and Brides, just to name a few. She did campaigns for companies like New York & Company, Target, Avon, Torrid, and Ashley Stewart. Takara went on to have a successful television career and was a co-host and red carpet correspondent for BET and often appeared on The Tyra Banks Show. She had small acting roles on Girlfriends, all of us and think like a man. She returned to reality television in 2007 on VH1's Celebrity Paranormal Project and competed on Celebrity Fit Club in 2008. She also appeared as a guest on Top Model in Cycle 12 and Cycle 14. Takara now has her own line of intimate apparel. Yaya was a student at Brown University, majoring in international relations and African studies. She is most known for being Afrocentric. She lost to Eva in the finale, and in my opinion, she's the real winner of Cycle 3. It didn't matter whether she won or not, because she had the most successful career after Top Model. She signed with Ford Models and did campaigns for Garnier Fructis, Radio Shack, Dr. Scholl's, Sephora, Target, and Olay. She appeared in music videos by Kanye West, Jay-Z, Chingy, Sean Kingston, and Raphael Sadiq. Yaya made appearances in dozens of movies and television shows. In 2008, she became a series regular on the ABC soap opera series, All My Children. Oddly, in 2013, Yaya was replaced by Sal Stowers, another top model contestant, as her role as Cassandra Foster. In 2015, she portrayed Whitney Houston in her Lifetime biopic and landed a permanent role on NBC's drama series, Chicago Med, and the show is currently on its fifth season. Yaya gave birth to her first child in 2013. Tiffany Richardson was a 21-year-old single mother from Miami, Florida. She originally auditioned for Cycle 3 after her grandmother, who's a huge fan of the show, encouraged her to audition. In the eighth grade, I got kicked out of my high school for fighting. My grandmother likes to say that this is where I turned into Satan, but um, I would just like to say that this is where I became a woman. She never officially made it to the house because she got into an altercation at the bar after a group of women began heckling her and the other contestants. Who are these bees? Are they famous? Like, who do they think they are? Is that I'm not famous. I'm not looking like. So we decided it was going to be a dance competition. So Tiffany starts dancing, homegirl starts dancing. Bitch pour beer on my weed. So I'm thinking, don't fight, do it. You know, everything was, I had the evil twin and the, the good one. So as we all know, the evil one won. <laughs> As soon as I turn around, I hear glasses breaking. Oh, no, she did not. Unbelievable.
fun. That stank hoe poured the beer on my weed. This is not even my hair. All right, baby, I know you're mad. I'm cool, cause I'm, I, don't, I don't got nothing right. to say, but I wanna beat her ass. All I know is violence, because that's all I've seen. Nobody ever taught me not to handle my problems without fighting. <laughs> Your head is not your blood. We blow them off for you back then. <laughs> like I said, I'm not trying to disrespect you, but I don't know where you from. I just don't you know violence. I OK, and that's great, Martin Luther King. But <laughs> I'm with Malcolm, you know? <laughs> Like the Bible says, do unto others as I'm doing to you. And that's just how I go. Exactly. I'm changing. I'm trying to change for the better. My grandmother and them helps me out a lot. And you know, I hurt them so much. I'm going to change. I'm going to change. No, I'm not all right. Because I'm not going back to no hood. I can't. I'm not going back to that hood. I'm tired of fighting. I'm sick of fighting. I've been fighting forever. I'm sick of this. Tiffany returned the following season to compete after taking anger management classes suggested by the producers. She was eliminated in the seventh episode after giving up on a teleprompter challenge, which pissed off Tyra. Tiffany will always be known as that girl who infamously made Tyra Banks lose her cool. This turned into one of the best reality TV moments, and the scene has been memed numerous times. I'm angry inside. I've been through stuff, so I'm angry. Yes, but it's not, this is not, okay. She loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? When you go to bed at night, you lay there and you take responsibility for yourself because nobody's going to take responsibility for you. You roll in your eyes and you act like this because you've heard it all before. You've heard it all before. You don't know where the hell I come from. You have no idea what I've been through. But I'm not a victim. I grow from it and I learn. Take responsibility for yourself. Tiffany says the argument was a thousand times worse in reality, and she recalled Tyra telling her, you can go back to your house and sleep on your mattress on the floor with your baby, in front of the other judges, contestants, and crew members. That was a comment Tiffany says always stayed in the back of her mind. After Top Model, her and Tyra spoke several times, and Tiffany was even being mentored by Tyra and her mother. Tiffany dabbled with modeling here and there, and appeared in Passion International Hair magazine. In 2005, Tyra invited her onto the Tyra Banks show for a top model reunion special, and again in January 2006 for a tell-all episode. This is my family. I'm living back home in Miami with my grandmother, and I'm taking care of my son. These are my cousins, the ugly girls that's sitting at this table right here. You know, everybody can't be this good looking. Chadwick, you watch mommy on TV? Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> I enjoyed the show. I felt <laughs> Tiffany made the show, but I'm a grandmother, so I hated watching me on this show. I'm Tiffany. Can you say magnetic? Everything was so new to me. Front. I never did ballet in my life. I had these big old red claws. I like Krusty the Crab. Ow! So you want me to do this? I don't need anything from you. Sometimes I was really rude. All y'all bitches evil. So I got drunk and threw up all over the place. Feeling better? I was really stressed. I'm crying on the inside. I'm proud of you because you're sticking this out. Just knowing that my family was behind me is really what kept me there that long. Both of you will pack your bags. I walked over to the girls and I was like, girl, chill. Like, I'm not dying. I'm just getting cut from the show. Tiffany, I'm extremely disappointed in you. This is a joke to you. She then starts yelling at me, and I'm sitting up there like, you serious? Like, are you yelling at me? You cut me from your show, and you yelling at me? And you come in here with a defeatist attitude. When I came home and watched it, I realized, like, a lot of things that Tara said about me was true. I guess I'm just not used to good things happening to me, because I was always, you know, making life rougher than it had to be. Tara, we keep in touch now, and she's helping me a lot right now. Not just with Marlon, but just emotionally. So, I love Tyra. <laughs> wow, I'm finally a glamour girl. <laughs> I've done International Hair Magazine. I'm really like starting to get confident in myself and know that, you know, I could be a model. <laughs> now that I'm back home, 
And I'm getting hit with toys and gotta get juice in the middle of the night. Being on the show doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> After that last episode, she says their relationship was over. Tiffany now works on normal 9 to 5 at a group home in Miami, assisting people with mental disabilities. And from time to time, she does shoots with local photographers. Since the show, she's had a second child and married her longtime boyfriend. Feranda Brassfield was a 24-year-old from Arkansas when she joined Cycle 6. Before the show, she graduated from the University of Arkansas in 2005 with a bachelor's in political science. Feranda was eliminated in the 11th episode and finished 5th. After the show, she signed with LA Models, but decided to become a real estate agent. Home for less than the cost of rent, even with credit scores of 600. Feranda can help you find an affordable home that you'll be pleased to call your own. Now is the time to buy because prices are on the rise and mortgage rates are at historic lows. Ask about programs to pay your closing cost and down payment. Call your home girl, Feranda, today. Toll free at 877-376-16. She has since put her political science degree to good use and now runs the law office of Feranda Brassfield. Jade Cole was 26 years old when she joined America's Next Top Model in 2006 and had previous modeling experience. Back in 2003, she appeared in Jay-Z's Change Clothes music video. She was the most outspoken contestant on Cycle 6 and one of the biggest villains in the show's history. This is a competition. This is not America's Next Top Best Friend. She also referred to herself as the biracial butterfly. Every time I walk down the street, I, I mean, heads are like turning, like, look at this. People know, they know Jade, they know my face. I'm ready to win. I'm ready to be America's next top model because I know I have what it takes. And I cannot wait to be me and show the world who I am. I'm gonna blow them away. And then they're gonna see who Jade really is. Humility, she does not. She's so like nature girl, Afro, like Afrocentric beads. You think she would be like my sister? We are all beautiful, but she's. She finished in third place on the season finale behind Joni and Danny. After the show, she signed to Elite Model Management in Hong Kong and appeared in music videos by Jamie Foxx and Neo. Danielle Evans was 20 years old from Little Rock, Arkansas when she joined Cycle 6. She was known for her gap and southern accent, both of which were heavily criticized by Tyra and the other judges. Danny was crowned the winner of Cycle 6 in May 2006, beating out Joni Dodds and Jade Cole, and immediately signed with Ford Models as part of her prize. She graced the pages of Elle magazine, In Touch Weekly, Essence Magazine, and the New York Post. She appeared in ads for Sephora, CoverGirl, Target, and Tory Burch, and also walked the runway for Baby Fat, Pyre Moss, and other brands. In 2020, Tyra Banks came under fire for her old remarks about Danny's gap. In the clip, Tyra suggested that she close the gap in her teeth because she felt her look was not marketable. So, Danielle, you went to the dentist, but you refused to have your gap closed. Do you really think you can have a CoverGirl contract with the gap in your mouth? Yes, yeah, why not? This is all people see. It's Easy Reads Beautiful CoverGirl. It's not marketable. Yeah, just a little bit is okay, but I don't want to completely close it. Well, I guess she just left the gap wide open for another girl, baby. I agree. Danny decided to speak out about the backlash and says she chose to keep her gap because it was her ticket out of Arkansas. Cut to that particular episode. Let's get into it about the gap. We were all going to the dentist as a whole. Me and Joni went first. We get to the dentist and the guy asked me, do you want to get anything done to your teeth? And I said, yeah, clean me up, whiten my teeth. He repeatedly asked me if I want to close my gap. No, I don't want to close my gap. Pushpin, none of this aired on TV. I'm giving you guys the behind, behind the scenes, right? He kept asking me if I wanted to close my gap. Nah, bruh, super cool. I'm super secure in my gap. Of course, like any other kid, I'd be lying to you if I said I grew up loving my long neck, my jawbone, and my gap. I did not. I hated it all. I used to cry and ask my mother for braces. We couldn't afford braces. What did my mother say to me? She reminded me that my two grandmothers, who I absolutely adored, had gaps. 
They're queens. You're just like your grandmothers. You know what? I learned to accept and love my gaps. So on top model, when they wanted to close it, I was like, nah, fam, I'm good. Cut to, we're now in elimination. So I go forward. Tyra's like, why don't you get your gap clothes? I'm like, huh? She's like, I told you to get your gap clothes. I'm like, no, you didn't. She looks off camera right to production, which none of you guys ever see. I look off stage camera right to production. Kim Mott gives me one of these. In that moment, I knew what was happening. I knew that I was basically set up and not being told that Tyra wants me to get my gap closed so that it's good for TV, right? So in that moment, the 19, 20 year old Danielle stood there realizing that it was my one way to get out on this side or keeping my gap on this side and going back to Little Rock, Arkansas. What do you think I'm gonna choose, fam? None of that on TV. What you saw is me coming up with the compromise saying that I'm okay with you closing it some of the way, but not all of the way. Let me explain something to you. The family that I come from, a family of hustlers, a family of go-getters, I was not going to allow something that is physical on my face to stop me from getting out to make a better life for myself. I had a laser focused goal. Nothing or no one was gonna stand in my way. And it wasn't about copping out. It was about understanding what really carries weight and holds value in my life. And teeth was not one of them. Um, I wasn't tight because of Tyra's comment about me not being able to model uh, with a gap. I wasn't tight about Miss J's comment about leaving the gap wide open for the next girl. All of that was trivial to me. I've heard it all before. What I was tight about is them trying to play me and making good for TV. However, the me now and reading the comments and understanding the weight that it created in other girls who saw that. This is why this post is being made because I want to address all of those young girls because I've been using this time in quarantine to really go back and to love on and to nurture the little Danielle from childhood. So I'm gonna take this time to build up and to speak to all of my young queens that saw that episode that were truly affected by Tyra's words. I want you, I wanna speak to you right now. You're beautiful. And I'm not talking about a physical feature. It doesn't matter if you have a gap, stacked teeth, straight teeth, it matters not. It doesn't matter if you're black, brown, white, indifferent, other. It doesn't matter. What makes you beautiful is in here. It's a matter of your self-worth, high self-worth or low self-worth. And no one can establish that except you. She is now the designer of a luxury hat brand. Isis King had been runway modeling and participating in the underground ball scene for several years before participating in America's Next Top Model. Isis, a transgender woman, was once featured in an MSNBC special titled Born in the Wrong Body, which documented the lives of transgender teens across the United States. She was living in the Alley Forney Transitional Living Program when she appeared on Cycle 10 as one of the homeless background models. After the shoot, Isis asked Jay Manuel whether she could be accepted as a girl born in the wrong body if she auditioned for the next season. Tyra was impressed with her performance during the shoot and had her producers find Isis to encourage her to audition. She joined America's Next Top Model in Cycle 11 and during her time in the competition, she dealt with transphobic remarks from the other contestants. Uh, Isis, I thought she, she looked a little manly. It's like, I have small boobs too, but her boobs, are, she has no boobs. So I told her to come over here, we're like, come here. And then you know you're part of the itty bitty committee, so. Y'all wanna figure me out, right? Huh? Y'all wanna figure me out. Y'all are smart, y'all are talking, it's okay. So is it true? It's what true? Are you all female? Physically without one female, no. My mind was like, what, girl? How'd you, ain't this supposed to be a girl competition? How did you get through the door? What happens if like, we have to do a new thing? I'll take care of it. I'm here to win. I'm not letting any of these girls bother me. I know what I'm here for. This is the person who I am. Either take it or leave it. The best person for this job, I mean, for this competition is going to win. What should matter is your spirit and how much you want to be. For Isis to be so brave and so secure with who she is, and being able to not let anything bother her, it's very commendable. Wait, who's the girl with the earrings? You didn't get the memo. She said that she used to be a man. What? Like, you're lying. So she totally confirmed it. And now she's on America's Next Top Model? Yeah. If 
I have to get along with ISIS, I will. But then again, if it comes between me and my goal, I'll stop that man right out of the competition. She finished 10th overall, and after the show, she appeared on the Tyra Banks show to discuss her life and transition journey. She returned to top model in the 17th season to compete in the All-Stars competition. Since then, she's had acting roles in over a dozen movies and television shows, like Shameless and most recently, Ava DuVernay's When They See Us. Special thank you to the Ash Slay Amanda on Instagram for suggesting the names in this video. America's Next Top Model didn't actually produce any real supermodels, but it was great exposure and helped a lot of contestants' careers. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and like this video and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.